Hi, thank you for joining us for the second edition of Shop Local. My name is Lisa Egan and I'm the Executive Director of the Reading North Reading Chamber of Commerce. And thank you for joining us. I'm here with Andrew Schultz, President of the Chamber, and he has a business here in North Reading, which is Andrew Schultz, Attorney at Law, PC. Thanks thank for you. having us. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. I appreciate it. So there's lots of stuff going on in North Reading. There certainly is. We're really excited about it. At the Chamber, we've been talking about Christmas since August because one of our big things is our tree lighting, which is on Sunday, November 27th, and we continue to grow the event. The Chamber has always sponsored it for the last 10 years, um, but now the trees along the left-hand side of the Common on Haverhill Street are big enough to illuminate. So we've made a $6,000 investment in terms of um, getting lights for those trees in addition to connecting the electricity that's in the ground through um, some trench work to the different trees along the common. So we're excited to see how it all looks. So we are um, planning the event and we've been doing so since the summer. We have a couple new things planned, including a um, farm animal petting zoo over at the historical district, which I think will be great. Um, we'll have it um, where people can come, look at baby animals, and also see all the things that the historical district offers that day. They do some great tours, and um, the Minute and Militia people also have um, things to see and do during the day. And I think it will be a nice way to showcase all the historical buildings right here on the Common. Um, additionally, we'll have restaurant tastings. As we did last year, we hope to have more. Um, I know we already have a commitment from Joe Fish. They'll be bringing their chowder, which will be awesome. Um, and strolling characters, lots of performances by local dance schools, Cervezi's Karate, and um, great music with a DJ. It's on Sunday, November 27th from 2 to 4.30. Also, feel free to check our website because we're, we plan a trolley ride throughout the afternoon. And last year, some people had challenges finding parking. So we're planning on offering a trolley and we'll probably have a trolley stop at one of the school's parking lots so people can park there and just take a trolley ride over. Um, so we're working with the school department to see where we can direct people to park um, so they can be sure to join us easily that day. It's gonna be a much bigger event this year too. We're, um, mm -hmm. we're gonna have Santa at the Reading Co-op Bank. Um, he'll be there to take pictures, and also Santa's going to come up on the comments to put the switch on the trees. Mm -hmm. uh, as Lisa, you just said, we invested about $6,000 in new LED energy efficient lights and electrical trenching. So all the trees, the smaller trees along the Gable Tree, like on Walnut Hill, are all going to be lit this year. It's going to look really nice. One of the complaints we have had in the past is, why don't we light more trees? Well, we're going to do that this year. Mm -hmm. And that $6,000 is basically from the business community, and we thank the local businesses and the local fundraisers people that support us that are able to do this for the town. We try to get back to the town and everything we do. And uh, it's going to be a great event. The petting zoo is going to be nice. It's going to be down back where the tractors are, where the Apple Festival is held, mm -hmm. off to the side. And like you had mentioned, we're going to have Santa down at the bank. And Santa's going to come up, I think on a fire truck, he usually comes up and uh, mm -hmm. puts the switch around dusk. And it's the Sunday after Thanksgiving. So it's going to look really nice. It's going to look a lot different than it had. Um, we're also looking for sponsorships. Uh, if you want to sponsor a tree, you can. If you want to sponsor a bulb, you can. Uh, this is a community event. Once we make this one infrastructure investment, we're going to have this year after year. It's going to be a nice thing for the town. Absolutely. We already have a few people who've already sponsored a tree, which is awesome. Reading Gymnastics, Fairly Realty, and the Savings Bank. Um, people who adopt a tree, it's a thousand dollars, and they'll have a plaque right on the common for three years. A nice brass plaque in the ground um, honoring their commitment to the tree lighting and also their investment just in um, that town and community event. So that's super generous. We're also going to do a program on our website where families can adopt a bulb just to help us again defray the costs because we are a nonprofit and we want the event to be free for people. We want people to be able to come and enjoy some food and cocoa and Santa photos and a tractor ride with Mark Hall. Um, and the way we do that is by seeking sponsorships. So adopt a bulb is just $5 a family, and we're going to have a link right on our website. So if people are interested in helping in that way, um, that will be live very soon. And our website for people um, listening are, is www.reddingandreddingchamber.org. 
And we start the event in the middle of the afternoon. And one of the things that, again, it's free. It's a great family day out. And all the local restaurants come out and they uh, show off what they offer. I think last year we probably had about 12 different food options for people. I think it's all free. And it's a great for our restaurants to come out and show the town, you know, try our food. It's advertising for them. And uh, it's a really great family day to get out there and, uh, like I said, around dusk, which is usually around 4.30 or so at that mm -hmm. time of the year, Santa comes up, flicks the switch, the lights are on, and that's pretty much it. But it's a great afternoon, and uh, we want everybody to come out. Absolutely. We're hoping the weather's as good as it was last year. Yes. And it's just a nice way to kick off the community, the, the holiday season. And then every time you're driving through town, the lights are lit, you know, throughout the whole month of December. And what people don't always know is that that is something we also pay for, which is why we do have to defray it with sponsorships, you know, from getting porto potties that day to paying the police and the detail that needs to happen and trash removal all of that does cost money and um that is why we're seeking sponsorships but i think that the people of north reading will be as generous as they always have been and hopefully come out and enjoy and kind of kick off the uh december season with and us we, and we also want to thank the, the town boards that we deal with the police absolutely the, firefighters, the board of health all these groups that help make this happen and they're very easy to work with and we really appreciate their assistance when we try to do these town events. Absolutely. It's been great working with Town Hall just in terms of coordinating the scheduling of, we had a landscaper, irrigation person, a, a electrician, as well as um, DPW involved, and they coordinated all of it, which was awesome, just to make sure it all happened. We didn't want trenches open especially on the common for any length of time. So they took care of all that for us. And the Board of Selectmen um, approved the DPW to hang the lights and house the lights and take them down for us at the end of the, you know, in January. So that's also a big help and a big support. We appreciate everyone's um, contributions. Definitely. Yeah, it's a great team effort. Um, yeah, I'm excited for it. Should be fun. Absolutely. So again, that's Sunday, November 27th from 2 to 4.30 on the North Reading Town Common. And again, we will be having some kind of a tractor, we will have a tractor ride, but a trolley to help with parking. So we'll have an update on our Facebook page as well as our website. We're just ironing out the details on where people can best park, but Correct. be a fun way to um, look at all the different dance studios and karate demos, et cetera. Um, speaking of November, we also have a networking event as you know, being in the chamber, we host a variety of networking, community, and educational events. So we always have um, things throughout the year. And in November, our members have asked for a little bit more of a structured event. So we're going to be doing a networking evening at Great American Tavern right on Main Street from 530 to 730. And it's going to be called, we're calling it Elevate Your Elevator Speech. So we're going to be working with the Wilmington Chamber right down the road and we're going to welcome people to come and we're going to kind of make a game out of it where we're going to be in the private room and people will get up introduce themselves and maybe say you know 30 seconds to a minute about what they do in their company and then we're going to kind of rate and judge everybody with prizes to see who um, has the best or the shortest or the most succinct or the most compelling elevator speech which is you know what's something as a business person should always kind of have crafted to let people know what they do quickly and easily and, and connect with people because what we want to do in the chamber most importantly is provide referrals to our members you know it's really a community of business members and it's always a pleasure when i get a call to where people say oh i, I want to do um i need someone for my books or i need someone to help with my website or my um office service cleaning service isn't working out, who can I use? It's it's great to always have qualified referrals to provide to people. It's all local, it's all people. Absolutely. Go to school, their kids go to school with your kids, they live down the street. It's all local businesses, mom and pops that we're trying to help out. Absolutely, and I can think, you know, we did a um, ice dam presentation at the library in Reading a couple years ago, and we had Mike Lenane there, as well as um, Mark Gilbert, two insurance agencies, and that was an example of what a difference of having a local person is where we had people standing up talking about how they had so much damage two winters ago and they were calling their out of state, you know, 1-800 number insurance company and months were going by and they were getting no assistance, no support. They had structural problems in their home. They were told they couldn't use their garage in one example. They had a car inside that garage. They were told they couldn't open the door to get the car out because the house might not be 
safe. Um, and it was very moving to hear for these stories of people who used an, you know, a national chain and if they had used a local person, it would have made a world of difference because when there's an emergency or something out of the ordinary, having someone local means you can just stop right into the office and you know you're gonna get results and they're really gonna stand behind their work or services because they are local and you can stop in if you, you know, aren't getting the service you need. It really made a big impact to realize what a difference shopping local um, really does help. And it helps to keep all the storefronts filled and busy and um, nothing is worse than driving around seeing a lot of closed closed storefronts so it's important people consider that during the holiday season you know when you're thinking about your coaches gift and teachers gifts um, you know all the different things we have to purchase during the holidays it's really important that people try to keep their money in North Reading and take advantage of you know a gift card from a local restaurant yes. or um, you know a gift bag from Brasante or whatever it might be when they're thinking of gifts correct um, so going back to the elevate your elevator speech, usually we have these after hours where we meet at a bar or restaurant and we have um, appetizers and it's really casual networking. This event on um, November 2nd will be a little bit more structured, so I think it will be interesting because people will get um, good feedback on their little um, elevator speech. They will meet new people, they'll leave with all the contact attendees, the attendee the contact information from all who attend. And I think we'll do it sort of like a speed networking style. So you'll meet everyone in the room, whereas at our traditional events, sometimes you only might meet, you know, 10 people who are around you. And I think meeting and knowing other local businesses is important. I'm a member of the, also the North Reading BNI Biz Builders uh, that meets every Thursday at the library at 7 in the morning. And, you know, being an attorney, I usually just deal with attorneys all day, but that has exposed me to all different tradesmen and all different people, different industries that... I basically know somebody local I can go to for anything right now, which is very nice. Uh, but it's nice to help local people out. Uh, we refer work back and forth all the time, and these people are vetted. You know, we know what they do. They all have reputations. If mm -hmm. I said some of the names, you would say, yeah, I see those trucks going around town all the time. Um, so I think it's important that, you know, shop local is one of the big things that the chamber pushes, and uh, we want to help the little guy. Absolutely. And, they, they, you know, with online retailers, it's challenging because sometimes you can get the same product for less and it's delivered to your door. So one program we all are also hosting is um, on Friday, November 4th, we're gonna get together with the president of the Massachusetts Retailer Association. Yeah. We're having a business breakfast in Reading. Um, Senator Jason Lewis is gonna join us and we're extending invitation to other legislators as well. Um, just to talk about you know, our brick and mortar stores and how we can support them during November and December, because a lot of them make up to 50% of their revenue during those months. And um, just creative solutions, proven solutions with an expert who knows, you know, the Massachusetts laws and how to work um, to still be successful, whether you're paying, you know, Sunday overtime or time and a half or minimum wage. He's going to help us navigate all those complex issues and give us suggestions on what we can do with not only as consumers, but also as a chamber to support our members um, and help um, that message of shop local and keep... And especially this time of year, you'll hear the term O-N-D, which is October, November, December. And that's when a lot of businesses, like you said, make half of their revenue in those three months, you know, depending on the business, of course. But So it's really important that the businesses are able to get ramped up and, and take advantage of the holiday season because that's where they're going to make their money for the year. Um, things do get quieter after the holidays, um, after Christmas especially, and um, you know this is the time of year where they need to make their hay, so they have acorns put away for the winter, so to speak. That's right, acorns for the winter. Um, speaking of those important months, we're also doing an event on November 9th in Stoneham with a couple of other local chambers, and it's called How to, Mark How to Wrap Up Your Holiday Marketing, mm -hmm. and um, it's going to be two experts, one who specializes in constant contact and email marketing on how to convey a meaningful message and engage people as well as someone who um, has a company and she's going to show us how to use this software called Canva which is a design tool that you can use for your email marketing your website it's very user-friendly and it can really um, take your messages beyond the clip art that um, is out there. It's a way to kind of customize it and make things fit with your branding. Be and it's distinctive. competitive. Online advertising is very competitive. It's not like when I first started in the business, you put an ad in the phone book. Well, 
nobody uses the phone books anymore, so it's all online based. And um, yeah, as you, businesses need to learn the tools that are going to drive people to their websites, and then have the website that actually gets them to come into their store. So I think these educational offerings we, we do offer to our members are very important because it helps people make their business go to the next step. Right. And it's great because it will appeal to any kind of an industry. So brick and mortar stores are a focus in the fourth quarter because they do rely so heavily on those revenues. But if you're a service, if you're an accountant, if you're an attorney, if you just are um, a social media strategist, um, any kind of business really has a website, needs a website, and needs to have an, you know, an engaging message there that brings people to not just learn about your company, but to, to want to hire you, shop there, engage with you, whatever it might be. Absolutely. So we try to be very broad in our educational events to make sure they appeal to everyone and not just um, one niche. Right. So, yeah, lots of good stuff for fall, and we're always adding new things. So and our video. That's going to be coming out. Yes, thank you. That's a perfect segue. Yeah. So um, they, the idea for this was inspired by another local chamber. Our friends in Winchester created a video on YouTube, and they were doing a Rediscover Winchester Day in this September. And they took um, videos of people in their businesses, as well as a, um introduction by the chamber, and really to remind people of all the great stores, restaurant resources, businesses right in town to remember to to support them. Right. So we're going to follow in kind with their blessing. We're good friends in Winchester and we're going to host a holiday video for chamber members. So we're going to have an introduction um, by the chamber and then we're going to reach out to all chamber members in Reading and North Reading and we're going to offer um, professional photographer in their business and we're going to take pictures of everyone and we're going to put it together for a video and blast it out on social media and YouTube and within our website to try to craft that whole message, which I like to call keep the cheer here, which means, you know, spend your money in town, make sure you're supporting our local restaurants, our businesses, our services, um, just because they do count on it. They do. Absolutely. And if you um, spend a dollar in North Reading, at a big box store, I think something like 40% go, goes back to North Reading. And if you spend it at a local store, 82 cents of that dollar stays in North Reading. The numbers are staggering on that. Yep. And if you spend it on an online retailer, zero dollars, you know, not a penny stays in North Reading. Right. So when you think about infrastructure and tax base and all that, you know, shopping at a North Reading business really does make a difference. And people count on it. This is their livelihood. It's part of the community. And as someone who lives here too, Nothing is worse than seeing a lot of empty, closed storefronts or buildings that are in disrepair and vacant. So it's part of revitalizing and making sure the community is always growing and we have new people coming in and um, busy stores and restaurants. And some of the big picture items we're looking to do in, in North Reading are gentrifying 28 has been a pet project of mine. Um, you know, you do find your ride through 28 in Reading and Andover doesn't look the same as it does in North Reading. And we want to make more of a downtown area. Well, how are we going to do that? It's a long-term project. I think the first thing we're, what we need to do as a town is invest in the sewer lines, not through the whole town, but just through the commercial area, between Concord Street, um, 62, and up Main Street. Um, that would enable us to build vertically. And mm -hmm. that would enable us to gentrify some of these buildings that, you know, some of them are pretty dilapidated right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's important. We're seeing some turnover in some of the buildings, which is good, but we need to see more. I'd love to see more office space. I'd mm. love to see lab space. Um, you know, I'd love to see more retail. I'd love to see a downtown area where you could park and walk and go to shops. Now, I know we're talking about doing that right now between, um, essentially between Kitties and the Walgreens. Mm -hmm. And I think that's great. I think you got to start somewhere and then you can expand off of that. Right. I know Walmart is talking about trying to do expansion. Um, but again, the lack of a sewer really impacts what we can do. And that's been a problem. It's been a problem for years. The chamber strongly supports the selectmen's um, move to getting water from the NWRA. Um, lack of water has been an issue we've had in this town uh, for quite some time, um, as far as you know, the issues we've had with the town of Andover and such. And uh, I think it's important that we, you know, have that resource because water and, and sewage you need that to build. That's true. And I think it's important to you know, concentrate, especially you could really do some nice things there if you can build vertically and I think it's important 
um, that as a town, we, we look long-term, you know, let's, let's play chess and not checkers, so to speak, and, and look 20 years out, you know, when our kids take over, the, you know, as businessmen and women in the town, what's the town going to look like? I think what we've done with the schools is fabulous. I know as a real estate attorney, it has absolutely increased property values. When new um, buyers come into town, I'm at the closing table, I always ask them, what did you pick from our threading? And I hear the schools time and time again is one of the reasons. So I think we're making investments in the town. I think we have to continue to make investments into the town. I think it's only going to help the business community, which is our constituents, mm -hmm. but it helps the residents because you have more options. You have more restaurants. You have more shops. You have more things to do for the kids, more part-time jobs for kids after school. Mm -hmm. It all is connected, and I think it's important as a town we continue to work together, and I applaud the selectmen's efforts on these fronts. They're trying. Um, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, but I think it's important that we try to gentrify 28 and make it more of a downtown, vibrant business community. I think it's a good thing. Agreed. Um, so dovetailing off that, going back to the video, we're going to be putting it out um, in November, December. So I'm going to be sending out some information for chamber members. It's going to be amazing free advertising, one of the benefits of being a chamber member. And for people who are thinking about, you know, probably going to join sometime soon, it will be a good impetus to join and, um, you know, take advantage of being on our business directory and having increased Google search engine results and being on this video that we're going to take care of and professionally um, produce and create a market for them okay. on behalf of our members. And you'd so. be joining a group that you know is looking out for you. Absolutely. Yes, you know, we're always working closely with town hall and legislatures, legislators to know, you know, what's happening for businesses, with taxes and, um, you know, support. Is really important so definitely hi thank you for joining us for the second half of shop local um, I'm still joined by Andy. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, now let's turn to a project that we're excited about for 2017, and that will be the first annual North Reading Town Day. Yes. The Chamber will be hosting it, and we, it's actually plans have been underway, but we want to formally announce that we're going to be hosting it on Sunday, June 11th, 2017 at Ipswich River Park. Yeah, it's uh, going to be a big event. We've never done this before as a town. Uh, we've had some smaller events like the Apple Festival and, and different events at the park, but this is going to be an actual town day where all the businesses, all the school groups, all the churches, all the sports teams, all the restaurants, anybody who wants to rent a booth can come out and show what they offer to the town. Um, it's going to be at the Ipswich River, Ipswich River Park. It's going to be in, if you remember where the 4th of July Carnival is, it's going to be in that section and spilling over to where the gazebo is. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a very big event, and we're excited because, in, in, and this has been a pet project of a few of us on the, on the chamber board, um, as we want to give the local businesses a chance to show what they offer to the community. And what better way is there than a town day? Mm -hmm. um, most towns do have a town day. We just never have for some reason. And I think it's very important that the businesses and just community groups and political groups and whatever, kid groups, have the opportunity to get exposure for their causes or their businesses or their restaurants and show the town what they offer. And mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a very tremendous event. Uh, it's going to be huge. And uh, we are very excited. Uh, the town has been great. We've been had this thing in the planning stages for months now. Mm -hmm. um, we're moving it forward. It's going to be, again, on a Sunday afternoon. Um, we'll have more details to come, obviously. But mm -hmm. I think it's going to be an awesome opportunity for local businesses and groups to be able to get out there and show what they can offer to the town. Mm -hmm. And it'll also be nice just to showcase at Church River Park because people who live in the community, maybe they don't have children or they've never been to the park and it's just such a great resource right in town between all the different fields and you know their barbecues in the summer and um, you know the little paved biking trail and the skate area and the um, uh, skate park. Yep. I think it's just, it's such a great resource and I'm really excited to bring the event there. We looked at all different areas in town and it just makes sense in terms of parking and, um, and really a community too, area. It's very flat, it's a nice area. Exactly. Walk around, the common is just too steep. Um, so we're really excited about it. I think it's going to be a really fun way to, to bring the community together. And we were really thoughtful about the date. It's always going to be a Sunday in June. And we considered, you know, when Father's Day is, when Memorial Day is, when the high school graduates. So it's Sunday, 
June 11th next year and it will be awesome. We're going to be putting together information, you know, in the coming months, but we're really excited to offer it to the community and uh, it's going to be a great party. Yeah. And we encourage anyone who has a business, has a community group, has anything, uh, a faith-based group, what have you, to come out, grab a table, you know, advertise your group, your organization, your restaurant, your store, whatever the case may be, your service. I think it's important that, you know, people know it's going to be out there and it's going to be just a fun day for people to go out and see everybody, see your neighbors, you know, hang out, get something to eat. Yeah. Um, we're going to, we plan on having a lot of food vendors. I mean, I look at, I think it was last, or two summers ago, the response from the food truck festival. Mm. I mean, that was huge. They had probably 5,000 people over there. Right. Um, so, you know, we're going to have more than just food, but we're going to have plenty of food there as well. And there'll be some entertainment at the gazebo. Um, it's going to be a lot going on with this. It's going to be a very big event and something the town has never done before. Absolutely. And we're going to think of, you know, all different ages and do some kind of either climbing structure or big inflatables for, you know, the young ones as well as teens and tweens. So there'll be something for everyone to do where you can just go and spend the day and get a meal and pick up information, um, find out about new things that maybe are going on in town that you weren't familiar with. So we're really excited about it, and um, you know we'll be setting up registration in the new year and welcome people's involvement. We're putting together a committee now to to plan it, and you know community feedback is welcome, and we'd love for people to help us um, pull the day together and make it awesome. And it's also a good thing for the town in the sense that you know the fundraising we get off of the town day, what does it do? It goes back to the town. Mm -hmm. It pays for things like $6,000 of Christmas lights. Mm -hmm. It pays for things like, you know, donating monies and, and manpower and what have you to various town events. I mean, we're a nonprofit. We, you know, nobody's making money here. We're all just giving it back to the town. And it's just the way we can foster the growth of North Burning on the commercial side. Absolutely. And it's great to just offer it to the community and Hopefully we'll have a great weather day, and uh, it should be a lot of fun. We're well, really looking we, forward to it. We picked June, too. April and May, you just never know about weather. So in June, is tough with everything going on. So we're trying to find that weekend between high school graduation and Father's Day, and that's mm -hmm. where we came up on the date we came up on. Absolutely. And I think a Sunday afternoon is good because I think it's a lower um, stakes day in terms of commitments. Usually Saturday is for a lot of people and families. You've got stuff all day long. Soccer, soccer and softball, and Little League. Exactly. So Sunday afternoon, you know, you're ready to put your feet up a little, and we're hoping that it will be a, um, yeah, well, I think it'll be great. Should be a lot of fun. Sunday is not as busy, Sunday afternoon, so be a nice way to wind down the weekend and kind of see everybody before summer starts. Yeah, and be on the lookout uh, in the transcript and in our social media. Uh, we're going to be advertising this and have more details to come, but save the date. So uh, it'll be a good time. It's going to be great for the town. We've never done this before. It is a guinea pig. We're trying it. We're learning as we go. Yes. Uh, hopefully we can improve on it year after year. We're trying to make it a yearly event um, and something that people in the town can look forward to. I've been to the one in Andover. It's fabulous. Mm -hmm. And I hope we can approximate what they do. And um, no reason why we can't do it here. Yeah, I agree. It's a nice way to um, showcase North Reading and have everyone come and um, host them and see what's going on and it's all the great businesses right here in town. I agree. So again, it's Sunday, June 11th. It'll be in the afternoon at Ipswich River Park right here in North Reading. And we'll have details on where to park and all that stuff when we get a little closer. Definitely. Um, so to learn about all of this information and more, go to our website, which is www.reddingandreddingchamber.org. Thanks so much for your time today, Andrew. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So this is a wrap for this um, second edition of Shop Local. Um, if you have any comments or information or you'd like to learn more about what we do, you can also feel free to call me. Our office is at 978-664-5060. And um, we're really looking forward to the video highlighting chamber members for um, our Shop Local program. So be sure to join and reach out for that too. Thank you.